ドクロング<笑>よよよ、It's your boy Luke coming back at it again with another video. In today's video, we will recap and review the events of Pokemon Journeys Legends of Arceus Special Episode 2, Heatran's Explosion. Well, at least that's what I'm gonna call it since we don't have subs yet, so that's my translation. For Episode 1's review, I already have it on my channel if you wanna check it out. It performed absolutely amazing. I'm honestly speechless, but I honestly thank you so much to those who in fact watched it. Next week on January 28th, we'll get the final 3rd and 4th episode, so be sure to check out my channel when they drop because I'll have the recap and review for them done super quickly just like this one. But with all that being said, let's recap all the events from episode 2. We get a cool opening sequence featuring the 5 main characters of the Legends Arceus special along with their Pokemon, Heatran, the Lake Trio, and Arceus. The episode begins right where the previous one left off with Ash, Go, and Don investigating the strange occurrences happening in the Orberg City side of Mount Coronet. While running along the mountain path, Pikachu, Grookey, and Piplup stop midway as they send something in the vicinity. A few moments later, a loud sound sets off as a huge portion of the wall gets shattered. Five little chingling come out of the wall with all of them looking hurt and confused. A Bronzong then breaks out of the wall. A chingling launches an attack but Bronzong retaliates, knocking the little ones down. Bronzong looks like it's experiencing the same pain as the Chingling, so Don instructs Piplup to use Whirlpool on them. This causes the Pokemon to break out of their misery. One of the Chingling is shown to be severely hurt, but before the game could even help it, their whole surrounding suddenly changes as if they were brought to another dimension. Azelf, Uxie, and Mesprit appear out of nowhere and start flying in circles. In this frame, it looks like Uxie is now with Don and Mesprit going to go. The Lake Trio continues to fly around and suddenly a bright glittering yellow light appears, revealing none other than God of all Pokemon, Arceus. Go is filled with amazement and awe while Ash and Don keep their composure. Arceus and the Lake Trio slowly disappear bringing the game back to the original world. Go points out why Ash and Don look nonchalantly after seeing the literal gods, but Ash replies by saying that he has encountered a similar experience when he and his friends, with the help of the Lake Trio, once rescued Dialga and Palkia. Don gently grabs the injured Chingling as she notes that Arceus must have been trying to send some sort of message, which explains why Arceus showed himself to them. Meanwhile, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars are shown to be planning to utilize Heatran's powers to open a portal to bring back their leader, Cyrus. The narrator even gives us a flashback of the arc when Cyrus floated into the new universe created by Dialga and Palkia. In the Pokemon Center, Ash, Go, and Don are found watching the news reporting about Pokemon around Morkernet being in critical condition. While concentrating on this alarming news, a man walks up to them informing them that the Ender Chingling is now doing just fine. They turn back to see who it is and to their surprise, it's Brock. I also just want to say that Brock looks amazing in his lab coat and in the Journey's art style. Brock looks super happy seeing his old companions again, but Ash and Don start blabbering about the things that happened. Then Go butts in and introduces himself to Brock. He tells him that he learned from Ash that Brock was a gym leader Pokemon breeder and is now aiming to be a Pokemon doctor. Brock's chance is also shown to have finally evolved into Blissey. And Krogunk's personality still hasn't changed at all as he rocks that nursing cap really well. Brock says that he heard the news on what's happening in Mount Coronet, and Don suggests that they go back to investigate the issue, to which Go agrees. Brock then tells him to leave everything to him. We are then catered to a scene where Brock drives the Brocket ship, or the Brockmobile, as the gang of four glide their way to Mount Coronet. On Team Galactic's end, they are preparing to launch their plans as Saturn instructs Heatran to use Magma Storm. The machine charges, emitting a powerful ray of light into the atmosphere. Heatran then discharges an even more powerful Magma Storm, as we witness the atmosphere beginning to open a portal. Saturn commands it to use Magma Storm one more time, but Jupiter warns them that it's too much power and it's going to damage your system. Mars and Saturn disagree, arguing that they can't stop now that they're only a few inches away from finding Cyrus, but as Jupiter predicted, Heatran's energy was too much for the machinery, causing it to explode and fire back into blazing fire onto Heatran. Heatran is found engulfed in flames, and as soon as Saturn tries to recall it into its Pokeball, he fails and Heatran melts the Pokeball away. I thought that was a really cool scene too. The Galactic Trio escape the building and Heatran begins walking towards Mount Coronet, burning everything in its path. Ash, Go, Don, and Brock, still flying, see the giant Heatran and decide to follow it. With Team Galactic doing the same thing, Saturn notices the protagonist from afar. The gang goes on to land the Brocket ship on a safe place and Ash starts pulling out his Pokeball to battle Heatran, but Brock advises him to stop as it's too dangerous to battle and there must be another plan to stop it. Out of nowhere, a Toxic Croak attacks the gang with Sludge Bomb, causing Brock's Krogan to come out of its Pokeball and fight back with Poison Jab. Team Galactic's helicopter arrives as Mars and Jupiter send out their respective aces, Ash and Brock are surprised by Team Galactic's return, but the admins are being snarky with their responses as usual. As Heatran continues to burn the surroundings, the Lake Trio by the wills of Arceus show themselves to go and approach the flaring Heatran. This episode ends with Heatran furiously emitting large amounts of flames. Now it's time for my thoughts and review. 
Wow, this was such an incredible episode to follow up with the first one. Although it didn't seem like the plot progressed a whole lot from the first episode, I believe that this episode did a fantastic job at carrying the plot along very well. I think this episode also deserves a 9 out of 10, but I did enjoy the first one slightly more. We got a lot of great continuity stuff with Brock. It was so cool to see his Chansey has gone and evolved into a Blissey. It was also great to see his Krogunk and the fact that he jumped out of Brock's Pokeball to fight Saturn's Toxicroak, that was honestly amazing. This episode also featured a lot less Pokemon Legends Arceus material and just felt like an intense Pokemon episode. I'd love to see the four of them travel together through Galar because their chemistry was honestly just great. The Heatran posed a very legitimate threat and honestly looks a little bit scary and terrifying. I'm wondering how this Heatran is going to be extinguished. As for Team Galactic, it's really nice to see Saturn being a pseudo leader and taking command of the team. He made it clear that their intention was to get back Cyrus and I can't believe I didn't think of that in the first episode. The way that Saturn's dust spawn melted from Heatran was really cool to me because I've never seen something like that before. I was really looking forward and expecting to get some backstory on how they got out of custody because they dodged a question when asked by Ash, so I'm looking forward to seeing that if that's covered in episode 3 or 4. Also the three admins of Team Galactic working so hard to bring back Cyrus was such a nice touch and they really do make a great team. We also saw in the previews that Brock had a shirtless scene and we haven't seen that yet so I assume at some point we're going to be getting a Mega Steelix moment. I hope that we get to see Go and Don contributing too and Ash perhaps using his Mega Lucario. Another point that this episode has going for it is that the pacing was excellent. There was never a point in this episode where I felt bored. Every scene was packed with either action or continuity and I absolutely loved it. I also loved Don using Whirlpool to help calm down the wild Pokemon and then showing her caring side by taking care of the extra injured Chingling that was a nice touch. When Go, Ash, and Don went to the weird dimension area, it was weird to see that Mesprit is now with Go seemingly even though I think Uxie still fits him better as he is more knowledgeable side at least in my opinion. His reaction when they first saw Arceus was also so priceless and loved the fact that he questioned Ash and Don's sanity as they had no reaction whatsoever to Arceus' appearance. It also further shows how much Ash and Don are alike and just like in the first episode it was made very obvious. In summary, I love this episode. It did a good job of packing in action and keeping my attention all throughout the episode. The episode further delivered on continuity as well as expanding upon the characters of past companions. If the other two episodes are just as good as this one, I am very excited for next week. So yeah, that's my recap and review for Pokemon Journeys Legends of Arceus Special Episode 2. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more when the next episodes drop next week, then be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. I also post other Pokemon content as well as Journeys episode reviews each and every week. My question of the day is what's your favorite part of today's episode? For me it has to be when Heatran first goes berserk and crazy and just absolutely destroys Saturn Dust Ball and attacks Team Galactic. I just really thought it was a cool scene. I also want to know what you guys think of any of the other gang Pokemon have evolved. I'm hoping that Don Skulava has evolved into Typhlosion at some point off screen. If you made it this far into the video I just want to say truly, truly thank you. And as always, it's been your boy Luap and I'm out. Peace.